Okay, welcome everybody to another patch stream. So this one is for the Alpha Zero patch four. Hopefully my uh, voice level is correct. You know, after an operating system upgrade, it can always be a little hairy. So just let me know if I need to be uh, a little bit louder on the voice or quieter on the voice. And I brought the music down a little bit, so it should be just about right as a background here. Okay, so patch four, which just came out last night, has a couple of really significant tweaks, and we're going to go ahead and go into those right now. So if you're all ready, let's go. So let's see, let's go ahead and build us a ship in the ship chooser here. Actually, how about, how about the Spectre? That one's fun. So the Spectre has no con, so just that one is fine. It just uses the default. It's got the default engines. And then let's go with something that's bright and easy to show up on screen, like the orange. There's a bunch of other really cool colors, but I think the orange and the red show up best on stream. So how about the red? Yeah. And then here we go. Ah, thanks, Den. I appreciate that. That is good feedback. Okay, so I've updated the, uh, the information here on the left a little bit because we've changed some of the controls. We've added a few little things. We've got the D-pad control, for example, is now, is now mentioned there specifically. So if you have a controller plugged in, you know, you've got the, uh, the controller controls for the gamepad. So in this patch, the main things that have been changed, I've done more work on the interior cockpits to get the, uh, the view distance and the draw distance a little bit better. Sorry, I should smooth that out a little bit. So the thing that we're working with with the near plane and the far plane is to make sure that the controls here are nice and sharp and don't get clipped, but to reduce that little flickering that you see there on the planet and on the station. Those require slightly different plane settings, and they've been a little bit tricky to get right. For example, in this view, you know, there's no flicker. But on the other view, there's a little bit. And we're getting that better in each patch as I, as I fine-tune things a little bit. So let's go ahead and move on in, and we will take a look at the second major thing. Because obviously, you can see the asteroids here. Got the new asteroid belt in place. Uh, the asteroid belt's going to get a little thicker, but not a lot thicker. This planet isn't supposed to be difficult to navigate around. Welcome! I'm so happy to see you here, Le Botan de Jules Linux. So for those that don't know uh, uh, Le Botan de Jules Linux, they keep a great collection of games and applications that are available on Linux on their website, which is hosted on the Tux family set. And they have a huge collection of all kinds of software that's available for Linux up there. And they have done a wonderful job of, you know, keeping up with the stuff that we have on ours. And I am very grateful for that. Okay, so I've made the uh, the little yellow landing zone indicator a little brighter because it was a little bit dim before. It's still kind of a placeholder, but, you know, it works. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and for our very first thing is we're going to come and we're going to land and take a look at the big change, which was getting the, uh, the beginnings of the mission system and the NPC interaction stuff in place. And so we're going to come land in here. And you can actually charge through this at full speed if you want to. That's why it's here. But, you know, eventually you're going to have to land a little bit more smoothly than that. But for right now, in the Alpha, we're making it very easy to dock the ship. So once you dock, you're inside. We have not added the, uh, the entire hangar bay yet. The hangar bay will, of course, be coming in future ones. Now, you're already familiar with the fact that you can come in here and you can go through the job board and you can look through the different jobs, pick jobs that you think are appropriate for you and go run them, do them, and make some money for your character, which you'll be able to use for, you know, parts and all kinds of things. But the part that we've been waiting on for quite a while as I've been working on it is actually going into Bad Luck Bart's Bar and getting interaction with the NPCs. There's eventually going to be a lot of NPCs in this game. We've got... Uh, four voice actors tapped to do 
several different roles. Though the only voices we have currently recorded are um, Our Day Gamer and let's see, we have we have Our Day Gamer, we have um, Amy Smith, and we have Kyle Hester recorded so far for some of their voice roles. So you'll be hearing those first, but more will be joining as we go along. So this is a. Uh, going to be a central hub for activities and whatnot. You'll come in here to get interesting jobs, to find things, things like that. But the hey, first thing, of course, very good to see you. is Bad Luck Bart himself. So Bad Luck Bart has a great backstory. You guys are going to have a good time digging into it. For example, why he's wearing a beard, which seems weird on a robot. You'll get all of that kind of information. Whether you're new to the Smigness Galaxy or not, it's all going to be in here. So right now, you can see the interaction system is starting. So he's telling you about the uh, the bar fight that's going on. And you can simply choose from the items that you want. This is navigable with both gamepad and mouse keyboard. So you can use the up down arrows on your keyboard. You can click on them with the mouse or you can use the uh, the D-pad up down characters to move between them. And then you just pick the one that you like. A big old fight, a real genuine slobber knocker. And you just progress through them by using the check mark. And as you can see, there's a whole story that's going on here. I'm closed for business right now. And then he's got some, some stuff for you to do if you're interested in doing it. Well, let me tell you. So as you can see, their resupply cargo ship was hit by debris from the bar fight that rolled out into space. So there's inventory floating around, and you can't get to it before the station's automated defense system destroys what they paid for. So this is an opportunity for the player to go out there and collect that stuff. This mission is still work in progress, so See you can you accept it back. or not accept it. It Thanks doesn't matter yet. By. I'm still working on that next piece. So it's only a placeholder at the moment. It's a stub. But soon you'll be able to accept the mission and then go out and collect his stuff, come back and get a reward. So we've updated this. Uh, thanks, Sten, for the feedback. This used to just have a empty listing, and it now says that you have no current job scheduled. So why don't we go get a mission, and then we'll go do that mission. So we'll cruise out here. Um, I'll go over what these doors are real quick. The Quartermaster's Office is where you will eventually uh, manage your equipment. The Academy is where you'll start out from, and you'll get your pilot's license. You'll have tutorials and such. The Hangar Bay is where you go to get back into your ship. And then, of course, Bad Luck Barts. So let's take a quick job here, and then we'll go explore these asteroids a little bit. So why don't we head on out to... Um, let's see, I don't want one that's too complicated to do, so yeah, I guess I'll take one to Alpha 1. That's the big planet that's out there. Okay, so we've taken the job. Now we're going to head on out to the hangar bay. And it will launch our ship for us. The hangar bay will eventually be explorable, but at the moment it's not. I have an awful lot of blunder work to do first. So you can see that we have a, uh, a little UI element telling us where we're delivering to. We have a reminder. Again, the controls pop up so that you know what controls you need to hit for things. We're going to go ahead and increase our thrust and head on that direction. And since this takes a good little while to get out there, as we head towards the... Uh, as we head towards the asteroid field, and you can see all the little tiny asteroids are all twinkling out there. Now, the ones that are twinkling that you can't really see, those are mostly there to give you that proper space field kind of feel of, a, of an asteroid field. And those are actually GPU shaders, so they're actually not even interactable. The large ones you see, however, are huge, and some of them will have missions. Uh, there'll be points where you have to blow up asteroids that are potentially a danger to things, you know, that are dangerous to stations or whatever. So there'll be some asteroid hunting. You can also hide behind asteroids when you're playing the uh, the Bounty Hunter version of the missions. And like I said, some of them have like secret bases and cool things like that in them that you'll do. You'll drop off cargo at some of them or pick up cargo from some of them. Cool things like that. And they range from really, really huge, which you can obviously see, to much smaller, but they are still physical collider objects that you can run into and crash. Fortunately, crashing does no damage to your ship at the moment. So now if we go to information, you'll see that we have little details on our job. Company is the true ship. Destination is Alpha 1. It's a medical cargo. And then we've got the cargo mass, the max mass. We're over mass on our ship, but we're not worrying about that quite yet. That'll come in the Alpha 1 
with the improved handling and physics engine. And then how much we get paid, and what faction it'll be giving us credit with. The factions will matter a lot more later in the game, as the, uh, the factions will give you additional bonuses with certain types of creatures, certain space beings and cultures. So if you've run a lot of jobs for Thermopans, you might get better rates when running a job for them in the future. Things like that. And of course, the uh, the smuggler and and shady trader faction are the ones where you'll do smuggling jobs and interesting covert operations like bounties and things like that. And those jobs will pay very, very well. And the faction for them is everything, because the more faction you get, the more they'll trust you, the bigger the jobs they'll give you, the more interesting the jobs they'll give you, things like that. So we're heading out here into this asteroid field. And while we're going at maximum speed for this ship, that's not maximum speed for every ship. Some ships are faster. And you can see here the uh, the piece that we're working on with the, the near far plane. It's it's still a work in progress. I would like to say that it's it's improving rapidly, but to be honest, you know, until I get the, the near far focal plane thing nailed down, it's going to be a little bit bumpy on the inside. But fortunately, that's not a heavily used view, and it will get better. Now, one of the things I added... Um, Unfortunately, I didn't add it to this ship. But in the other ship, in the El Toro, I've added the door. And the door will soon lead so that you can walk deeper into the ship, into the crew quarters, so that you can decorate your quarters and things like that on board the ship. That will be coming probably in Alpha 2. So that's going to be a ways out still. Okay, so... As we head out here for this... Um, unless there's any questions about the things I've shown so far, the asteroid belt and the interaction... I'll start talking about Alpha 4 in general, and what I mean by we are almost to Alpha 1. So, patch 4 on Alpha 0 that we're at right now. Let's go check out one of these asteroids while we're flying past it. Uh, this is probably the last patch on the Alpha 0 set. So, Alpha 0 was going from the very first proof of concept of the game, for people who've been backing it since the beginning, who got to see and experience and get their feedback into what the ships looked like, what it handled like, how it moved. You know, what things were important to them, you know, how the cameras worked, things like that. Alpha Zero was getting all of that that basic framework in place so that there was something that resembled the game that could be played on the hardware for the people that were interested in it and got all that, that backer feedback and everything. And Alpha Zero will end as soon as the first missions are playable. You can already take and do cargo. That was that was the first important part of Alpha. But the second part, see, and here's a, a solid asteroid that I've run into. And as you can see, it does not destroy me, but it does stop me and I can't go any further. And I'll head on by. And deeper in here. So that was the first thing that we needed to get done. So we're approaching the end of the Alpha Zero. And once the missions can be, uh, once you can actually complete the first mission from Bad Luck Bart, we will be at the point where shipping, missions, and ship customization all work. They all exist, even though they're, you know, not full. They're not a lot of content to them, but they work. So this is the, uh, the patch right here where we've got all of those stubs in place and everything is just about ready to go. Alpha 1 hopefully will be coming out here in a few weeks, possibly five or six weeks. And Alpha 1 will include the ability to complete Bad Luck Bart's first mission. Uh, some improvements to this UI, the current job and current mission UI. I'm going to be tweaking that up a little bit. And you'll have the ability to use the... Uh, the information browser screen to actually do more things. I mean, you can already use it as a job browser and whatnot, but you'll be able to use more things on it. And then when we get to Alpha 1, we'll start working on things like improving handling, improving graphics, adding content, content, content. We've got many, many more missions. We've got way more shipping jobs. We've got a lot more to do. And I'm hoping that by the end of Alpha 1, we will actually be moving on to going to other planets in the system, in the Alpha system. We probably aren't going to go to other systems outside of the Alpha system 
until we reach beta, but we'll we'll see how that goes. For right now, the goal is just to get Alpha One done. Um, I'd like to improve the uh, the planets. I'd like to improve the UI, things like that. Uh, we've got to get the combat mode. We've got to get the sensor mode activated so that you have the ability to scan things and you have the ability to do that. And we need to get the landing mode turned on. <laughs> yeah, as Sten puts it, you can't wait to break, I mean, test the missions. Yes, I uh, I am very dependent on Sten, our fantastic and, and fearless QA guy to, to break the heck out of those missions because I know that as soon as they get streamed, they're going to break, so it's better to have them break when I can fix them before they actually get streamed. So I've, I'm pretty happy with the way Godot handles the uh, the 8K planet textures, but I've had a heck of a time creating a proper atmospheric shader. However, there is a, uh, a Godot project that is creating an atmospheric add-on, and I am looking forward to uh, seeing how they've done theirs, and... Uh, taking a look at it and seeing if I can learn anything from, from what they've done. It is MIT licensed, so I'm, I'm pretty excited to learn from them. If we end up using it, we'll obviously add them to the credits. I, I don't know. There have been three or four different atmospheric shaders that didn't really pan out. But, you know, we'll, we'll credit people when, when we actually are able to use any of the stuff that they produce. Uh, has the transfer of functionality from the old engine to Godot been completed? Uh, that is a good question. We are probably 80% transferred. The things that are remaining that were on Unreal that have not yet come across, uh, we don't have the ability to land on planets yet. That was uh, something that I had just gotten working in Unreal, and I had not gotten it working here yet. That'll be an Alpha 1. And the, uh, the scanner mode from Unreal did not work properly, but it was there. So that will be coming over to Godot here shortly, but in a slightly different form. And the other thing that we had in Godot, that, or that we had in Unreal, that has not made it to Godot yet, is the uh, the ability to upgrade your ship at the uh, station. And that will be coming here shortly. I, I ended up moving it to a different location, to a ship chooser before you start. And the quartermaster's office will be coming online, and it will be that, that last piece of functionality. And then the only piece that will be missing from Unreal will be particle shaders because I have not yet learned how to do particles in Godot. That will be a, that will be a big thing I need to learn. So, short answer, about 80%. Long answer, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a few specific things. So we're almost to our delivery area. The, uh, the giant red sphere obviously denotes our uh, delivery zone. And as soon as we cross into the giant red sphere, our delivery is considered complete. We have dropped off our package and can move on. As the game goes on, as we get towards uh, launch, we will actually give people the option to either pick a quick drop delivery like this one versus an actual landing delivery where you actually have to land and offload your cargo and drive the cargo loaders and things like that. But that's that's not for uh, today, that's for that's for probably after launch. Because there's a lot of content that I want to add before we worry about that kind of stuff. There we go, delivery completed. 2,000 credits added. We will head on off from this planet here. So, We've gone ahead and we've explored one of the asteroids. We've taken a look at it. In fact, uh, here in this view, you can actually see the cargo bay. It's on the rear of this particular one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit escape and hop out here. And then we will go into one of the other ships. And I will show you the new door that will lead to the back. Why don't we grab the El Toro with wings. We'll grab the, uh, the larger con. I'm going to put the winglets on it. And I'm going to grab... I think I'll grab the orange. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, Le Botan de Linux asks, will we be able to land on a planet soon? Yes. That should be coming very soon. That is actually second on my to-do list. So first on my to-do list at the moment is the uh, finishing Bad Luck Bart's mission. 
And second on my to-do list is adding the planets so that you can actually land on the planet and so that you can land on the moon. Both of those things are really, really critical to me, so I'm going to have those up soon. We're going to aim for like a destiny planet landing. So you'll basically fly up to the planet and then as you break the, uh, the zone for the planet to be the atmospheric zone, you'll have an option to choose to land and it will then have a cutscene basically like that one where it'll then put you into the atmosphere and you'll be able to fly around on a zone on the planet. Uh, the reason for that as opposed to you know going for example with a fully interactable planet is it can be really hard if I'm actually making the planets even a modest scale to find things and I really don't want people to be completely lost looking around for where they're supposed to deliver stuff. So back here we've got the uh, the crew quarters let me move so I'm not getting ray traced lines from the uh, the station causing stray lighting. Okay, so there you go. You can see the hatch that will lead into the crew quarters of the ship. That's the second portion of the ship right here. And the uh, crew quarters actually sit below the piloting area. So this one doesn't have very tall berths, but it does have berths. And those will eventually be customizable as well. Ah, thank you. And then uh, I know that, that um, you had mentioned previously that it would be uh, valuable to have our patch notes and whatnot in multiple languages. I will be working on that. Um, my French is terrible. So I'm, I'm sparing you my horrible French. But we have some people who are very good at that. And then Sten here will actually be doing the, uh, the translation into Bookmall. And then we'll also be doing it in uh, Spanish as well. So I'll try to get the patch notes multilingual as soon as I can. I'll probably be able to do patch notes in at least uh, French and Bookmall and English. Fairly certain, I think. I think as long as I give Sten some lead time, it shouldn't be too hard for him to be able to translate those. And then as far as uh, the voice lines, I'm not planning to actually have the voice lines done in other languages anytime soon. So we might add those, but that's going to be long after launch because that's expensive. Uh, voice acting is, you know, it's 250 bucks an hour. So it's, it's unlikely for me to be able to add voice work in multiple languages anytime soon. But the actual written dialogues will be. You are welcome. Um, we really wanted to do figs plus Bookmall originally, but I have not been able to find anybody who can do reliable Italian or reliable German translation. So we won't be able to do the full set. But the, the big ones, we definitely need to do Spain because the uh, the Spanish, the Spanish speaking um, South American populace has always been a huge backer of our stuff. And France is, uh, is always a big one. And obviously Bookmall because you know, a third of our team is Norwegian, so. And as you can see, the ray tracing looks pretty freaking good. I'm quite happy with it. And I'm able to actually maintain roughly 60 frames per second while running two screens and streaming, which I'm pretty happy with. And this right here is using the ray tracing to its absolute utmost, as you can see. We're casting rays from our engines and everything all over the place. In fact, if we kick up the engines a little harder, You'll actually see the blue light from the engines bouncing off the uh, the sides of things here, see? These are all missives and all that kind of good stuff. And moving the ship around causes it. Uh, good 04 is just beautiful. I'm, I'm really thrilled with it. Okay, so there's the main things on the list of what we've got right now. So here's the part where I actually exit the game. I switch to the standby screen, and then I switch over to show you guys some of the work in progress things that we're working on. And then we'll just do that real quick and answer any additional questions that you guys have. Oh, I should probably first make one of the great announcements that I've been looking forward to for quite some time, which is to let you know that I have completed the uh, arrangements so that the soundtrack for Smugglers of Cygnus will be available 
to Patreon backers as a free add-on for everybody at the uh, $1 and up tiers. So you're all going to get a copy, a digital copy, of the Smugglers of Cygnus soundtrack. And that will actually be pretty soon. I'm just getting a cover set up for it and everything. And so probably this coming month, it'll be in the September set, you guys will all be getting a, a uh, link to download the Smugglers of Cygnus soundtrack. So I'm very happy about that. Yes, it would be lovely to get Portuguese and welcome Jess. If I can find somebody who is a, uh, a reliable translator for Portuguese, we will definitely get Portuguese. Because Brazilians are also huge, huge sci-fi folks. And some of our, our, um, our biggest sales of uh, Cygnus Pizza Race were actually in Brazil. All right, let me see. Let me bring up one of the scenes that I specifically hoped to show you guys. <laughs> one moment while I try to find it. It's so much easier if I do this when I'm not actually uh, uh, sharing it. But, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm slow. Ah. Wait. It's not the one. Ah, here we go. Okay, let me go ahead and share this. Scene, and then let me switch to the correct window. There we go. Okay, now let me just size this. Okay, there we go. So, right here, you guys may remember this from the wallpaper. This is actually a live scene in the, the station. That's how I actually do those. And what we've got here is one of the actual asteroids that's out here in the actual system. It's giving you some rough clues to its location, though it does rotate. And these asteroids, some of them have neat little hidden secrets. And it looks pretty unremarkable until you get fairly close up to it, as you can see. So there will certainly be missions where you guys will be uh, where you guys will be going out here and visiting some of these on occasion. So I hope folks are looking forward to doing a little bit of exploration, because I plan to have more than a little in the way of of cool hidden stuff and um, places to visit and and check out as time goes on in the game. There'll be so many, you know, little smuggling dens and things like that. You know, because that's, that's really what people like about a game like Smugglers, is going out there and, you know, going to the interesting places. That's sort of the point, right? So, there's going to be a number of those. And then we've also got, of course, let me see if I can zoom out far enough so you can see it properly. We've also got, of course, the actual station itself, and there will be more stuff to do to explore the station, running around inside of it, going and checking out more cool things, and things like that coming as well. So there's, there's a lot of detail and a lot of things and places to go all throughout the entire system. One of the things that I'm looking forward to most to sharing with you guys is actually going and seeing the different stations, because this isn't the only station. We've actually got quite a few. And let me go ahead and bring up a picture of that real quick. Oh, I think the easiest way for me to do that is actually to bring it up on the browser, because it is in the current work in progress. So let me uh, one second here while I go ahead and bring that up, and then I will share that specifically.
talking about the future stuff, I always fall off the rails a little bit. I apologize for that. At some point, I will be a more polished streamer at this stuff, but for the moment, I always kind of fall off the rails a little. Okay, so... Okay, let me switch this over to the the appropriate window here. There we go. Okay. So this is actually the alpha system, which is the first system in the game. And the place that the uh, the stuff that we've all looked at so far takes place is actually right here. So this is the alpha one planet and the Alpha-1 station. As so you can see, the little station right there. I can zoom in a little bit to make it a little bit clearer. Oops. So this is actually the location that we're all in right now on the game in, uh, in the early Alpha. So what'll happen is we're going to be soon adding probably Alpha-2 the ability to start moving between these planets. And as we move between these planets, you'll get to explore more stuff. For example, there's another station out here on this particular planet. And this one has cool stuff and a really nice ring system to explore. And there's a lot of interesting stuff hidden around this ring. And then you've got some more planets that have interesting things you can land on and whatnot. And this is just the first of all the various solar systems that we're doing. We're actually planning on doing eventually something in the neighborhood of 100 solar systems. But that will come in time. That's not going to be anytime soon. I am hoping by launch to have at least two. But we'll see how that goes. So for right now, the plan is to get this one and this one all set so you can land where you're supposed to be able to land. And then we will start recruiting the other ones. I'll probably recruit this one next because that's a gas giant and it's a lot of fun. And then, of course, there's another station there. But we'll, we'll see how it goes. So the way that you travel between these, since uh, folks are definitely going to be asking, the way that you travel between these is actually going to be one of two different methods. You can either do what we call a jump, and that's your, your typical sci-fi magic jump, where you go from one place to another place. In our particular case, we're using quantum entanglement, because why not? And jumps are very, very expensive, but they're very, very fast, and you can jump instantly anywhere in the universe. Though, so if you're wrong, you know, you die. So you basically have to go to specific locations. Or you can fast travel. And fast travel will be the way that we implemented from the very beginning, and what will happen is you'll get to the edge of that bounding box for the, uh, the world. And you'll get an option to fast travel to the next location, which will take time in game, but no time for the player. Basically, the player will just jump to the next location and it will just simply update your, your game clock as to how long it has taken for your delivery. So if you have a timed delivery and you have, say, an hour to deliver a specific package, the hour to deliver a package will elapse faster if you're going, you know, with the, uh, the fast travel between locations than it will if you're doing a jump, because a jump is instantaneous. I mean, you're never going to have an hour to deliver a package between planets, because planets are, you know, huge distances apart, obviously. But just, just as an example. So the fast travel, it might say two weeks have passed, and you'll be at the next planet. And then you'll have that whole zone to explore. Now, these planet zones will have asteroids, they'll have cool interstellar gas clouds, they'll have lots of little bases, tons of things to explore. The actual size that we've made these things, if you, if you look at the size of these, these things, they are enormous. Um, to give you an example, let me switch back briefly here to Godot to show you what I'm talking about for the scale. There we go. If you look at how far away the station is, stations at the zero point, to the Alpha 1 planet that's right there, it is 90 kilometers in actual Godot metrics. And that is 
unbelievably big. And the actual map is roughly a hundred cubic, uh, hundred cubic kilometers in size. So you can actually have a really big space to screw around in. And we plan to fill it with all kinds of stuff. There'll be things floating around that you can find. There will be uh, NPCs that you can interact with. There'll be other ships. There'll be hidden bases and, and uh, things that you can pick up. There will be schematics for parts. There will be all kinds of neat things to do. And you can also, you know, once you've gotten your pilot's license and whatnot, you'll be able to blow up small asteroids, you know, things like that. You'll be able to have a great time in each zone. And all of the zones are a little bit different. Each one of the planets has its own little way that it's that it's set up. So some of them have an asteroid belt, some of them don't. Some of them have multiple stations. Some of them are really busy traffic hubs, so there's just a stream of planets or a stream of ships coming back and forth all the time. Some of them will have a lot of local missions that just go back and forth, back and forth, you know, things like that. Some will have towns. You know, for example, this particular moon right here. Oh, wait, that's an asteroid. Sorry. So, not the asteroid, but this particular moon right here, currently uh, not able to be seen. I'll jump over there so you can see it. This moon actually has two towns on it, and you'll be able to land at one of the towns here shortly, and there will be characters there that you can interact with, missions that you can accomplish, deliveries you can pick up, things like that. You can run around on the surface of the moon, all that kind of stuff. Part of that was already done in Unreal, and is being ported across, and part of that will be new. But that stuff's all coming in Alpha 1, because, as I said before, the Alpha 0 was all about getting to where we are right now. So as soon as you're going to be able to fly around Bad Luck Bart's location and actually fly around the station to get things done, that is when we are going to be uh, finished with Alpha 0. It's a long, long way. Even going to one of the, uh, the, the asteroids that's sort of in the middle, it's still a long way between these things. Okay. But I think that about covers what I've got to share for this particular session. So let me go ahead and uh, launch the game again here, and I'll put it in the background and answer any questions that you guys have. Let me make sure that the... Uh, the game is up. Okay, and it is. All right. So let me check and see if there's any questions anyone has. Okay. Um, other ships with IAS. Um, I'm not sure what IAS is. There will be a variety of different ships that you can pick from, and there will be other ships. There will be other ships in the world that you can uh, that you can interact with. There will be both computer piloted ships, like, you know, um, I hate to use the term AI, but, you know, basically simplistic AI ships that are just other people flying, or just, you know, computer programs flying ships around. There will be ships with, with uh, NPCs flying them that are worth making friends with, NPCs who have missions and quests for you. Whether we're going to have multiple players... We hope so. We hope to have multiplayer. That proved to be the biggest stumbling block with Unreal. And I can't promise how it's going to go with Godot. It's not going to be in the alpha, though. But multiplayer is something we would very much like to accomplish. But I, like I said, I, I already... I, I overstepped with the multiplayer in Unreal, and it ended up being a giant problem. So I, I want to get the game delivered before I, I try to reattach that or reattack that problem in Godot. <laughs> but yes, there will be a lot of ships you can interact with. There'll be ships you can upgrade to. There'll be new models, all kinds of things like that. Um, I'm currently working on at least three more models of ships from the Commodore ships, which are absolutely enormous, to the, uh, the other player ships that are you know much more reasonable sized. And of course, the stealth ships. And there will be, you know, some ships that you can earn by doing missions, some ships you'll be able to just buy, some ships are only available from certain locations, and some ships will be made from things that you find. Oh, yeah. Yeah, as far as animated, yes. 
There will absolutely be things like that. So, uh, Le Botton de Jure Linux said, um, I wasn't thinking of multiplayer, but more of animated. Yes, there will be definitely plenty of other uh, computer piloted ships. Like I said, with uh, captains that have missions for you. Some will be pirates. Some will try to attack you. Some will be people who are being attacked by pirates that would like some help. And several of them are going to be missions where you have to find somebody who is attempting to evade you. And those will be fun as well. And uh, the, the actual ship combat stuff is coming, but it's not going to be coming soon. It's going to be coming probably in Alpha 2, is my guess, because I have to get Destructibles working properly in Godot first. And Destructibles are its own whole big uh, physics thing. So we'll, we'll work on that and get that sorted. You are welcome. Okay. Um, let's see. I think that covers pretty much everything. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare to wrap up here. If anyone has any other questions, by all means, go ahead and ask them. And I will try to get to them as soon as I can. I will give it a minute here while uh, the stream lag catches up. Ah, when will the next planet be accessible? Uh, the next planet should be accessible sometime during Alpha 1. So probably in the next three to four patches. But the first planet that you can land on should be coming up here soon. I'm actually working on uh, making the moon landable at the moment. So I'm hoping to have the ability to land on the moon and visit locations on that moon there within the next, like, you know, few weeks. It will depend. The landscape, uh, the landscape tool for Godot is a bit more complicated than I was expecting it to be. So it, it put me behind a little bit there. So you should be able to land on the moon and do deliveries directly to the surface of the moon actually very soon. Hopefully next patch. But traveling between planets, that'll be that'll be still a little bit before we get there. You are very welcome. I am delighted that you took a chance to stop by. I know that the uh, the timing is odd for you folks who are on the uh, the European <laughs> side of the planet right now. So I appreciate you and Sten for dropping by. Thank you so much. And I look forward to, uh, to sharing more updates with you guys. And uh, I look forward to adding the new stuff to the Patreon here. There's going to be obviously a wallpaper, another chapter of the new story, Adotria. And uh, the soundtrack should be up there as well this month. So anybody who's backing for $1 a month or higher will have access to the soundtrack and the wallpaper. And then um, the Odotria story, of course, is at the $8 and up tiers. The uh, first book, Final Lap, is almost done being edited. And I should have the ebook for that probably next month. And then everybody on the Patreon will get a copy of the ebook. From the first book, Final Lap, all about our plucky little space heroine, the adorable space otter, and racing in Cygnus Pizza Race. So thank you all so very much for being here. You are fantastic, and you are very appreciated. Thank you for backing Indie Games. And I'm, I'm so happy that so many people who are involved in Linux are part of this project, because this is a very Linux-first project. <laughs> So thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend, 